My name is Kirsten Margatan. I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Ecuador in 1989 to 1991 in the town of El Triunfo in the province of um, Guayas. Well, I remember when I went to, um, flew into Guayaquil and then took a bus to go to the town of El Triunfo. And I was amazed as I was looking out the windows in the bus ride, it's about a two hour bus ride at the time, all the cattle and the horses were swimming because it was the rainy season and they were in, in these fields and there were houses, little pockets of houses here and there on stilts and all the cattle were swimming. <laughs> and I, I said, what am I getting myself into? <laughs> It was flooded. The whole area was flooded. <laughs> and one of my first impressions was I went out um, my door. I lived right in the center of town and I was, it was early in the morning. I wasn't quite awake yet. And I looked out and I saw this guy riding a bike down the main street of town and he was going really fast. And as I looked at him, I was watching him, his feet were on the handlebars and it was the current from the water that was pushing him down the street and he was just hanging on and going for a ride. <laughs> One of the honors of being an American in a community where there are no Americans is you get the prime food whenever there's a meal. And in one of the communities when I would go visit they would feed me guinea pig and I would get the head portion with the little teeth and the eyeballs and the ears and the two front legs that were all curled up in little claws. So not my favorite meal. It's pork. It tastes good but it's not a meal I would choose. So you didn't want to insult so you would eat it? Oh absolutely. If someone offers you food in Ecuador you always eat it. favorite story. Um, I worked in, it was called Ventura, and it was one of the communities that we could get to by train or a long walk, and we were leaving the community, and the gals had given me, a, I worked with women's groups at this community, and we're working in family gardens, and she had given me the, the horse to ride, and they came to a point where the horse could not cross the bridge because it was a railroad bridge, and so the horse had to go around through the stream. And the ladies went across the bridge and I went through the stream to and met up with them again. So I was on my own. And after I crossed the stream, I looked down and I said, oh, somebody must, you know, I thought to myself, someone must have dropped their necklace because there was a beautiful beaded black and yellow and red necklace on the ground. So I got off my horse and went to grab this necklace because I figured someone had dropped it and it was a snake. So I got on my horse and took off and said, no, I won't do that again. Um, who is now my husband, uh, Miguel, and I went to Guayaquil and we watched, went to watch a movie. And we stayed for a double feature because if you stayed in the movie theater you could watch the next movie for free. And it was very late at night when we got back to the bus terminal. It was like one in the morning and we knew there was no more buses. And so we were waiting to leave. And they did have some buses from the Sierra, from the mountain areas that go through the town. And we were waiting outside the bus terminal because we were thinking we could catch one of these mountain buses. And we got on a bus and we sat down, this is like two, one or two in the morning, it was very late. Sat down, you know, finally relief, we don't have to sleep in the dirty bus terminal. And I sat down, I was getting comfortable, and then my, who's now my husband, said, let's go, let's go. And he picked me up and he started pushing me out, out of the bus. And he pushed me right out the door and I was so mad what was going on? Why did you do that? You know, how, we're going to have to stay in the bus terminal tonight. And later on, we, it turned out that that bus um, had been assaulted. And several people had been robbed and, and women were assaulted on that bus. How did he know that? I, to this day, I don't know. He just, we spent the night in the bus terminal. Did you ever ask him, did, did he have a feeling or did he say? He said, what he said was when these guys got on, they didn't look him in the eye and that's he just felt very uncomfortable and he trusted his instinct on how he felt with with these people that got on they they got on a little bit after we did and he just he felt it was not safe I learned a lot from my friends there what you can do and what you can't do and I am not afraid in Ecuador 
but you have to be very careful about using common sense. Okay. Um, not going, you know, not going out alone. Ecuadorians tend to stay in a crowd or stay in a group. There are certain neighborhoods you don't go into. Um, there are certain things you don't do to draw attention to yourself. So learning how to keep a low profile, and I've traveled from one end of the country to another, um, and I have not had a problem. Okay. When we had training, we were in a town called Tumbaco, which is about an hour from Quito, and we were in the garden um, at Tumbaco learning about um, planting in Ecuador and the types of products they plant and, and about planting. And I had a little garden section I was planting. And as I was weeding the radishes, and every once in a while I was talking to a friend who was a couple rows over and we were weeding, and something furry would run, I would touch something furry and I thought, you know, I, I didn't ever notice what it was. And as I'm planting or as I'm thinning out or um, pruning these, these radishes, thinning them out, um, I, I looked down and there was a tarantula as big as my hand. And I'm not afraid of spiders normally, but this was more than just a little spider. Now that's not the funny part. The funny part is that I screamed, which is not real like me. But the gardener, this little guy about four feet tall, came running over and he took his, the blade of his machete and he pushed this tarantula so it was flat on the ground, all this leg splayed out. And he said, um, he sa and he, he saw it right away and he asked me, do you want it? And I'm like, do I want the spider? And he kept repeating, do you want it? Do you want it? And I'm like, no. And he said one more time, do you want it? And I'm like, no, I don't want anything to do with it. And he picked, he, he had this one hand, he had it on his machete and he had a tarantula on the ground flat. And he took his other hand and he pulled out what I assume were the tarantula's fangs. And then he grabbed, he took, picked up his machete and with his other hand very quickly picked up the tarantula in his other hand. And he put it right to my face and he says, you sure you don't want it? I'm saying, I'm sure, no, no, no. And he took it, now this is the funny part, and he, he shoved it in his pocket. And then he walked off. <laughs> and I asked some people, what, what was that all about? And apparently that's one of the ways that they can earn money, is selling spiders to pet supply stores. And they can take it to the, at that time, could take it to Keto and, and sell it as a pet. <laughs> Very neat. Very fast. Who knew? Who would know? I have another story for you. Mm -hmm. I worked with the boys in our town. At that time, they were all boys. They still are all boys. Um, the shoe shine boys, and their job was to earn money on the street shining people's shoes because in El Triunfo it was a very dirty place, and Ecuadorians like very clean shoes. So, I had um, written to my church in Managua and they had given me um, some money to buy these shoeshine boys tennis shoes because most of them did not have shoes. And we had, with um, my now husband at, at that time, um, we were not married, but we had taken this group of shoeshine boys and got them shoes and got them t-shirts and we took them to different parts of the town so they could play soccer. And a lot of them had never left the, the main streets of the town. So to go out to the country and play soccer was a, was a pretty big deal for them. And it was so much fun with, with these boys that I had um, decided it would be nice for them to know the rest of their country. So I took this group of kids to the beach and you know, first time any of them had ever been in the, in the ocean or been on a beach. Um, and that was wonderful. And I also took them up to Inca Pirca, which is an old Inca ruin. And when we would take them places, they would play soccer with the other sh um, shoeshine boys in the town where we would go. This kind of an impromptu game, whoever was, was available and, you know, give them some food or some soda. And, and they'd all love to play soccer with these other group of kids. And once we took a train, um, from Bukai up to a place called, um, it was outside of Rio Bamba. And we, instead of sitting inside the train, because by the time we got there, there was no room on, inside the train. So we sat on top of the train. It was an old coal fired train. 
and you roll when you're you're on a train it's not like a car motion it's a circular motion on these old tracks and one of the boys said to me he turned around and said to me and these are kids who had never been to school and he said senorita christina it's like riding on top of a bowl of jello and it was such a perfect description for how <laughs> what our what our trip was like that i that's one of the things i to this day remember Uh, my name is Miguel. Uh, I'm from Ecuador. Okay, and, uh, and, and you're married to a Pisco volunteer? And I'm just saying married to a Pisco, a former Pisco volunteer. Okay. <laughs>